Well, there's this thing that happens to everybody called aging, and it's 90% of all the, the sickness and suffering in the world, but no one seems to care about it. In my view, in my world, aging is a medical condition. At any age, we should apply the same technology, the same effort to make people live as long as they possibly can. Don't pay attention to 99% of what's out there on the internet because it's all wrong. Speaking of wrong, we have a new theory of aging. We used to think that antioxidants were the cure to aging. And if you go to the supermarket, you'll still get a lot of that bull. It's not true. Antioxidants have been really unsuccessful at lengthening the lifespan of anything, even a worm. It doesn't work that well. The reason is that there's much more going on than just free radical damage. What we need to do is to tap into our body's natural defenses against aging. We have three main sets of defenses. One's called mTOR, response to fasting. One called AMPK, response to low energy and lack of sugar. You wanna keep your blood sugar levels low as possible without fainting. And the group of genes that I work on are called the sirtuins and they respond to all of the things that we do, the adversity, the exercise, the fasting. And this group of genes and these proteins that the genes make sense the environment and when times are thought to be tough and could threaten us, they fight harder to keep our body safe, protected, and ultimately healthier and longer lived even late in life. But here's the analogy that the DNA is the digital information on a compact disc. That's your genome, the digital information. The epigenome is the reader, and it can read different songs depending on different parts of the body and different cell types. But what I believe is causing aging is the skipping of those songs, skipping of the reader. And what makes songs skip? Scratches. So aging is essentially scratches on a compact disc that makes the music skip. And eventually cells, by reading the wrong genes, skipping the wrong genes, lose their ability to fight against disease. They lose their function. We get dementia, we get heart disease, we get cancer, we get frailty. That is aging. Well, so I've been studying these enzymes, the sirtuins. Uh, we have seven in our bodies. I've been studying them for about 25 years. And what we've learned is that they respond to the cellular environment. Uh, there's a chemical that they require for gas. Think of them as the fuel called NAD. And there's another molecule that is like the accelerator on the enzymes uh, that makes them go in even faster. And that's uh, one of them is called resveratrol, which we discovered years ago from red wine. Mm. And together they actually do really great things on these enzymes and make them keep the body younger at least. For 25 years, we've been studying mostly um, animals um, and even little fungi uh, yeast cells. And what we've learned from those studies is that these are largely involved in responding to when organisms are under threat of survival. So how do you make the body feel like it's under threat? Adversity. Uh, so one is run a lot, or at least become out of breath. You know, a few times a week, your body will say, oh man, we had, we had to outpace one of those saber-toothed cats again. Got to, got to build up the body. Um, the other is to be hungry either a couple of times a week or every day, you know, skip a meal or two. And then your body will turn on these sirtuins, make more of that fuel, NAD, for the enzymes. And we think that's what's in part responsible for the health benefits of those uh, lifestyle choices. Um, and so what we do when we exercise and what, if we skip a meal, what we're doing is inducing this very ancient, very, very ancient, billions of years ancient mechanism that protects our body against decay, disease, uh, and the root causes of aging in an effort to survive. Uh, and so you really want to do the opposite of what modern life gives you. What we do when we're hungry, skip a meal or two, which is what I do every day, it boosts up our longevity genes and they take care of us. We know that if we boost the longevity genes in animals, they live longer, they're healthier, they stay fitter for longer and they die much quicker at the end of life. And I think everybody would know that in, in human history, fasting is considered one of the healthiest things you can do. And so there, there's so much evidence that it's really incontrovertible that skipping meals is not only good for you, but will make you live longer. There was an incredible study that was that of the NIH uh, in Bethesda. A good friend of mine, Rafael de Cabo, and his lab had over 10,000 mice. They put them on different diets, different carbs, protein, fat. And they, they then divided those diets into two groups. Some mice got food all the time, and they nibbled on it during the day. And then the others got the meal once. I think it was for an hour only. And those mice gorged themselves and, and ate almost as much as the ones that were grazing. And it didn't matter what the food was, it was the ones that ate 
in that window that lived dramatically longer. So if you can extrapolate, and there's always caveats, but I think the principle still holds in ourselves, which is it's not as much about what you're eating, but when you're eating. And it is confusing because first of all, we're all different. We have different levels of willpower. We have different jobs. Some of us are hungry in the morning. Some are hungry at night. Um, some of us can go for three days. I can't, but some people can. Some can go for just a, the morning. Plus we're all genetically different. We all have different microbiomes and food preferences. So it is complicated, but I, I found it relatively simple to explain it this way. If you are not starving at breakfast and you prefer dinner, skip breakfast. And if you can do without dinner, skip dinner. But skip one of those two because then you have a whole period of sleep that uh, means you're fasting and your body will protect itself and repair itself better. Now you can take it one step further if you're game. Uh, and that's what I did over the last um, 18 months during the pandemic was to also, as best I can, skip lunch as well. So I go all day without eating with a tiny little bit of yogurt in the morning to dissolve a supplement. But essentially I'm just here, I'm holding a glass of water. I'll have tea, I'll have coffee, that'll keep me full. Um, and I go till dinner and at dinner I have a, a reasonable meal. I'll go out to a restaurant and I'll eat something and try not to be full. I don't stuff myself because I'll actually sleep poorly. Um, but I, I, I really enjoy that. And first of all, it saves money. Second of all, it makes you enjoy food a lot more. And third, there's a misconception that you'll feel tired. It's totally wrong. If you can get through three to four weeks of that with some willpower and, uh, and a bit of uh, hot beverage, a few hot beverages, you'll actually get, your body will get accustomed to it to the point where eating lunch feels weird and you definitely don't need it. And you definitely don't feel tired. And I don't get that afternoon slump, which I know is caused by uh, a decrease in insulin after a lunchtime meal. And I've never felt better. I've never looked better. I've never had so much energy physically and mentally.